Hi, we're at Islay Creek Campground. We're taking a quick tour of the Holloway Garden of Native Plants. And first up, everyone needs to know what this plant is here. This is our California sagebrush, Artemisia californica. And he's an Asteraceae, but he's not flowering now. But he's super common, easy to recognize out here, all the way up here. So this plant here, this is our cliffside buckwheat, Aragonum parvifolium. He's a small shrub. You got these little tiny pinkish flowers, very dense terminal clusters. And the shoots and the seeds of this plant are edible. And the flowers, the Native Americans, they made them into an eyewash very similar to the Aragonum fasciculatum, which is California buckwheat. The leaves here, a little bit different though than their other buckwheat. They're thicker. They're more broad, almost like succulent type. They cluster in stars, but they work themselves up the stem alternate fashion. In fascicles, like the Aragonum fasciculatum, until they get to the top. This guy here is also very common, all the way up and down California, on the coast, in the inland riparian areas. This is called cowdy brush, Baccarus pilularis. And this plant is a dioecious plant, so the males and the females, they're on different plants. But right now they're not flowering, and I believe they should flower in fall. So this plant here, not this shiny silvery one, but this guy here with the tooth leaves, just like that. He's a sawtooth golden bush, but he's not flowering right now. Hazardia sclerosa. So this yellowy, trumpety like plant here is called a sticky monkey flower. Mimulus. Arantiacus. You see them all up and down the bluffs, but I can't go back there because it's kind of restricted area. But we got some over here, and we got some over here too. Here, of course, is our Monterey Cypress, Hespero capyrus macrocarpa. He gets his name macrocarpa. He's got these huge seeds, almost like a California juniper, but they're really big. Macrocarpa means big fruit. These guys are all windblown on the bluffs and they'll flatten out. Beautiful. Only found up in Pebble Beach area in Point Lobos. So he's not native to this site, but he's here anyway. And over here, this guy's called a silk tassel bush, Garia elliptica. It's got these uh, curvy little leaves. They're a little bit lobed or serrated. It's got a thick stem. It comes up here. So here we have some black sage. And it's a true sage because it comes from the genus Salvia. It's got these long, little lance-like leaves, okay? It's got the seed pods up here. And you make him into a little tea at bedtime. It helps you sleep, but he also induces little hallucinogenic thoughts. So, kind of a little love-hate give and take here for this guy. Salvia. Mellifera. This guy here is a coffee berry, Fragula californica, or Fragula californica. Either way, that's fine. If we're lucky, we get some little berries on him. Right here, These little coffee berries. And I think you grind those up if you want. Make some old ancient Native American coffee. This is a really small shrub. These guys get really, really big. So this fern-like plant, 
He's called a rattle weed. I don't know, because his little leaves look like little rattles, maybe. Astragalus natali. After the, uh, you know, famous botanist Natali. I think that's who he is, like a metals woodpecker. He's named after that fellow. Got this red stem, a little bit fuzzy. Got those seed pods, they're empty. I don't, this is the only time I've seen this guy. Probably just gets this color. Yeah. So this plant here, it's a pretty big shrub. Look at that. He's called Ocean Spray. Holodiscus discolor. He's got leaves here. They're all lobed. They work themselves alternately up the stem. Here, 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 all the way to the top. He's a rosaceae, so he's related to roses. But he has no flowers on him today. So maybe you got to come back if you want to find him with flowers. This tree here is a coast live oak tree, but he's pretty tame. Most of the time you find him, he's just all just gnarly and spread out and falling around the ground. You find him out in the chaparral or the oak woodlands. He's Quercus agrifolia. He's got these very hard leaves, bit glossy on top. Okay, on the bottom, not as much. Very waxy. And they're bent here, but they're designed to help reduce heat loss and transpiration. So, this guy's, um, doesn't get a lot of sunlight, I don't think, but the outer leaves always tend to bend back more. See how it bends back here? Then the inner leaves like this guy here. And he produces acorns that the squirrels and the scrub jays and acorn woodpeckers, they love to eat. Now this little fern-like plant, it is a fern. Or it's called a fern. He's called a western sword fern. See that? Polystichum unitum. Just a little fern guy here. There's a tiny little one here. He's a very ancient, old plant. Ferns are some of the original plants that ever came to life on planet Earth. This might be one of them. Here we have some more of our black sage. Salvia mellifera. And up here, this is a Douglas iris and the spider web here too okay he's a douglas iris iris douglasiana he's from a family called iridaceae let's see if i get down here all right here we go so he starts in the bottom i think he's a true iris with a bulb and he'll um sprout up here these long, leafy blades. They're uh, very smooth on the edges. Okay, these are the uh, seed pods that are developed after the flower kind of died on top. Little seed pods here. You can probably break this off, get little seeds out of there, put it in your garden, it's like an African iris, let's say, and they'll grow just fine. Here we have a croton. It's just a catch-all phrase for a bunch of different plants. This guy here's got very soft leaves, a little bit serrated, but they're not serrated where they hurt you. It's really velvety on top and on the bottom. It's really veiny, look at that. So if you plant him right, he's a little herbaceous plant. He'll kind of flow over your pot, get real thick. He's kind of easy to take care of. Just a normal croton. This guy here we find all over the place. Silver dune lupine or lupine. That's fine. Lupinus camasonis. 
So the seeds of this plant are poisonous. So don't eat the seeds. And um, the fruit, or the seed, is a legume that I can't find on this plant here. We don't have any seeds, but we have lots of lots of silvery, glossy leaves. They come in little bundles on the stem, and they're very soft and velvety. It's a real good plant to have. Silver dune lupine. It'll give you little purple flowers that kind of stick them up, stick up on a like inflorescence. So this low-lying guy with the long stems coming up to the top, where you get the flowers, this is called Coast Goldenrod. Solidago spatulata. And um, it's a little coarse, it's serrated. And uh, his top and the bottom, pretty much the same color. This little guy is called Beach Burr. Ambrosia camasonis. He's pretty common. He's got these opposite leaves coming out and they're a little bit branched. They're lobey or lobe-like. He's got this pretty, pretty color. It's called a beech burr because down here, after all the flowers are done blooming, let me see over here. You got little burrs that tend to grow. That little guy, little burr. They grow, and those are the seed pods. This guy here is mock heather. He's Ericomeria erecoides. He's an Asteraceae. So there's little flowers here, right? They're related to sunflowers and daisies. You get lots and lots of little flowers, or little disc flowers in each flower. We got the little anthers sticking up. We have ray florets going around. He's a pretty, pretty broom sort of brush. You find all out there. He's so easily confused with the, like golden bushes, other uh, golden brush we have. But he's a mock heather. And here's one here. We have all in seeds. We find them in sandy areas. And he's got tiny, tiny leaves on him. See that? It helps identify this plant. This little succulent here, this is a Dudlia. There's little leaves, they grow in little handsome rosettes around here. And sometimes they have little reddish tips on the end. So in spring, he sends up a flower stalk like this, and he gets little rosy buds. And of course, he's a succulent, so he can uh, withstand long periods of drought. It's called a Dudleya. Now we have a couple plants here. This is called Giant Wild Rye. Elimus condensatus. And uh, he's just a giant sharp edged uh, disaster here. Anyway, he gets in his big bush. If you want to cut him down, you just cut your hands all the time. I don't like this plant so much. But here, it's called a fuchsia flowered gooseberry, Ribes speciosum. And he's really, like gooseberries, they're really spiny or prickly. So you don't want to step on him. But we have no gooseberries. Look how spiny. Look at those spines. Ouch. This plant here, really pretty red stems, pretty twin flowers. It's called a twin berry. He's got twin berries and twin flowers. Lanicera and Volucrata. And here's a variety called the Deborei. It's got this beautiful red leaves, or stems. The leaves here, they're opposite up the stem. See that? Opposite. So everything's in twins. Opposite, opposite, opposite. And they're twins all the way up to these 
twin flowers with twin seeds. And underneath, we get nice purple bracts. See this guy here? That is called a brack, and that's the flower. It's called a twin berry. And here, on this side, is called a hedge nettle. Stachys bellata. He's just like a weed. He's a nettle, but he's not a... You know, see, nettles always have little... I don't know, I see right there. I'm not sure he's a stinging nettle, but he always has little tiny thorns on his stems. Sometimes those little thorns can inject little poisons into you to keep you away from this plant. This guy's even flowering. Little purple flower there. This guy here is a wax myrtle. Okay, he's got uh, lance shaped leaves, nice and green on both sides. Nothing real fancy about this guy. We've got tiny little berries up here. But what happens with this guy? He's got all these multi branched shape here all around. So he's Marica californica. He's densely branched, evergreen shrub, or even a small tree. And his leaves, here we are. I mentioned they're all tooth like here and they're glossy. He gets tiny flowers from March to April. And then they get little wax colored nuts, or wax covered nuts. Here we go, like right here. Okay, it's called a wax myrtle. This little plant is called a lizard tail because he's got these little flower segments that come out. They look like lizard's tails. But don't mix them up with the yerba, which is also a lizard's tail. It's got little purple flowers here on top. So we're almost done. We're going to cover just a couple more plants. Right, here's our coyote brush. Bacris hylularis. Real common, but he's not flowering today, so that's kind of tough. Okay, over here, we have another coffee berry. This guy's a lot bigger than the last one I showed you. It's got little coffee berries here coming in. They're not ripe, and then they get ripe. Coffee berry. What else we had over here? I think there's another one over here I wanted to show you. Oh, yeah. So this guy here is our Toyon. Our Christmas holly. Alright, he's real common out in the chaparrales. He's got uh, little serrated leaves here. Some more here. His scientific name is Heteromeles arbutifolia. He's got little rose, he's a rosaceae. He's got little rose flowers with five petals and all the stamen and anthers and the good stuff inside. And then, right about Christmas time in November, he'll get lots of red berries. And he's not a true holly you find in Europe, but the Europeans, um, they came to America and they called him a holly because he looked like holly. So here we have our Arroyo Willow, Salix Laziolepis. He's real common in the chaparrales and he likes to grow in dry creek beds. That's why they call him an Arroyo, which is the word for a dry creek bed. He's a little glossy on top and on the bottom he's white, whitish. When he flutters in the wind, you get this kind of, you know, white green, white green waving around. So you always find them in areas like a barranca where it kind of just floods once or twice a year and the rest of the year it's all dry. This is our arroyo willow. Kind of flutters like a willow. So this little shrubby guy, and he's all lots of sticks, but he's got little holly leaves, obviously. He's got these holly leaves. They all look exactly like this. Okay, he's a holly leaf cherry. Prunus elisifolia. He's really um, woody. All right, well, thanks for joining me on the little walkthrough of Holloway Garden native plants. 
Uh, beautiful, beautiful Pacific Ocean. Have a great day. Bye.